Hi, my name is Kathy Torsney, and welcome to my presentation for the Religion and Spirituality in Society Conference. I did a study on aspects of spirituality in the narratives of persons. What I did was I looked at the narratives of people with brain injuries um, and analyzed them in terms of theme um, for to, um, redemptive imagery, meaning, gratitude, that news anchormen in France have a voice than French-speaking anchormen in Quebec, comparing five from each place. When asked about the selection criteria um, for France, he or she said I simply that uh, he chose these five people because he noticed that they have a high-pitched voice. Um, through my work the typical the pattern the for the less scientific projects in social sciences that, that I see is one that is entirely qualitative and, um, with very few participants. Had brain I must injuries and were having difficulty recovering often um, showed a lot of progress as a result mm. of constructing a narrative of their experience. Um, there are very, uh, several studies that support this assertion. Uh, of course, Tenna Baker has done a great deal of work on the benefits of narrative to mental and physical health. Um, there was also another study about... There are two the possibilities I see here. And, Either uh, A, journalists, R&D employees, civil servants, and pollsters, etc. are all several of these characters, which in fact is the topic. Um, and the narratives can also help individuals working with a person with brain injury to better understand projects are largely qualitative. Um, how to help them Among the projects in social sciences that I have examined, less than 10 percent have a quantitative component. The typical case is having between 8 and 15 people. There are a number of studies, too, that looked at the benefit of religion and spirituality in coping from trauma and loss. And, and also other studies that looked at how important making meaning of an experience is for an individual who has suffered some loss. I've seen that a lot with my work with people with neurological uh, disorders and trauma, and I've seen that those individuals who get a sense of meaning from their experience tend to do a lot better than those who don't. Um, so, th in terms of addiction, which there's a lot of overlap between addiction um, and traumatic brain injury, um, oftentimes. Um, spirituality is very important to the recovery of many individuals with addictions, and, and there's a lot of literature, too. Uh, another review of the literature, which relatively recently talked about uh, how religion and spirituality can assist a person who has had a trauma, and how the trauma actually can help build a person's attachment and understanding of religion and spirituality, and that after trauma, some people can have a, a kind of sense of growth or improvement. I've seen this a lot in, in my work with people with um, traumatic losses, and uh, some of them who had a very difficult lives before the injury turned their lives around uh, 180 degrees and after after the trauma um, and you know had a fulfilling and, and rich life. Um, what isn't as well examined in the literature is the role of spirituality in the narratives of individuals recovering from various traumatic losses um, such as brain injuries and, and how exactly um, that plays out in, in an individual's description of uh, his or her experience. So what I did was I had um, 30 narratives. Uh, 10 were obtained through a standard interview process in person. 10 were derived from a um, published journal that contained a patient's point of view. And uh, 10 were on an internet site, which had resources for persons with brain injury. There was a whole um, section that contained narratives of um, people who had some sort of traumatic. Um, in terms of the population 
description that they were 50-50 male and female. Um, mostly car accident, um, some stroke, and then some other accidents, you know, kind of environmental, workplace related, and then uh, assaults. The time since injury, the, the mean was 3.5 years. I'll talk about it later. The um, oral accounts were the average time since injury for the oral accounts was shorter, or sooner since injury than for the written and published accounts. The written and published accounts were constructed um, well after the injury. And th I think that's something to be examined further. The mean age around 45 years. For some, uh, the um, published and internet accounts that didn't contain information about age. So uh, I knew the age for the oral narratives. The other ones, I um, that's an issue. I had two research assistants who were trained in grounded theory method who uh, reviewed all of the narratives and coded them for content themes that was it. Loss of self, themes of agency, and communication. Um, what I found in the study was that there was a significant amount of um, aspects of faith in all of the narratives. Um, and that there was a difference um, by type of narrative in terms of the, uh, what was contained within them. Published and internet accounts had more um, themes of unity and togetherness. More people talked about how they gained meaning from their traumatic uh, experience. More people talked about faith. Um, all of them had aspects of faith that were significant, but that the greatest amount were in the published and internet accounts. There were greater expressions of gratitude, and some people talked about how, you know, as a result of this life-changing experience, they gained, you know, a deeper life, um, better understanding of what their role is in society and how they could help others. And then there was also more redemptive imagery in terms of, you know, how um, this meaning has uh, helped them you know, turn their lives around. Um, I did a, you know, one-way ANOVA by type of account, and, you know, here are the results. And you can say, you know, for unity and togetherness and um, gratitude, the significance is highest, and then the other ones, you know, is high as well. Um, there was more anger in published. I didn't have this in the, the paper itself, but there was more anger in um, the oral accounts than in the published and internet. Um, and that's you know, another issue that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so the, the final results suggested that oral narratives are significantly different from published and internet accounts. And this may be because people um, are aware when something is published, such as in this presentation, um, that it can be judged versus just kind of a, a conversation or an oral account. Um, something that's in print has a sense of permanence, and so uh, sometimes people are more um, discriminating in terms of what they do or do not include, and they might be more conservative about uh, expressing things that others might um, interpret as negative, such as anger, um, you know, less you know, um, meaning in the experience, things like that. Um, issues with this study uh, include the small sample size, you know, because, you know, it's a narrative analysis and because, you know, it's such intense work, it's a smaller sample size, and it would have been better to have a larger sample size. Um, and in terms of the written and published narratives, one cannot know how much other individuals helped with the uh, creation of the narrative. You know, maybe there was a, a therapist or a family member or somebody else who said, oh, maybe you should include that, you know, in your publication. Maybe you should include this. Um, maybe there was more assistance in, you know, um, describing the narrative. So, you know, for another study, it would be good to, from the beginning, um, compare oral, published, and internet narratives, and then to get a, an actual sense, a real understanding of um, how much outside influences such as family and clinicians and friends um, had on the uh, creation of the narrative. 
Um, constructing narrative can help a, a person with a acquired brain injury with developing its faith, meaning, and a sense of unity. Um, a lot of people that I work with said, you know, I survived for a reason, and then I can use my experience to help somebody else, and uh, that is my purpose in life. And it actually helped a lot of them get out of, of you know, the, the depression and the, um, you know, kind of devastating aspects of the loss. Um, and kind of get out of their own pain and um, you know, into uh, an altruistic mode. Um, and for some of them, it, it really helped them, you know, get the initiative that they needed to get back into the world. Um, for a lot of traumatic losses, there's a good deal of shame a lot of times, and uh, isolation and alienation. And so. Anything that helps them get a sense of community and togetherness and connection with others can be very therapeutic. Um, the issue that I mentioned before is that you know the published and internet narratives were written you know, many years ago versus the oral narratives, which were um, you know um, g given a short time, you know, within uh, two years after the injury. So the you know, even though there wasn't a significant uh, interaction between time since injury and type of account, um, the, it would be better to have a uniform time, pretty you know, plus or minus, uh, after the injury uh, for the narratives to. So in terms of areas for further research, uh, it would be good to look at. How people with acquired brain injuries and other traumas understand religion and spirituality. A lot of times people either group the two together or they confuse them or they, they, there are various interpretations. One study, recent study, talked about um, you know, the, the meanings of spirituality uh, among a lot of people with addictions and, and the um, other recovery groups were very different. Uh, unity uh, was big and meaning was big, um, but there, there are a lot of differences. So it would be good to have a study to look at, you know, what exactly are people talking about um, when they say religion and when they talk about spirituality. Um, it would also be good to see how spirituality evolves after trauma. and you know, say six months after the trauma, a year, two years, five years, ten years, um, and to see if it evolved, if, if so, how it evolved, and what might be the contributors to that evolution. The other thing that would be good to look at are um, how the narratives of people with acquire, acquired brain injuries are similar or different to those with other conditions. Um, with people with uh, you know, uh, injuries to the body or amputations as a result of war, um, people who you know have physical injuries as a result of chronic illness or degenerative diseases, it would be good to look at you know how they are alike or different, um, and again why. And uh, the last aspect would be to look at you know the relationship between cognition and language skills on the narrative, especially for people with you know, acquired brain injuries who may have a wide variety of issues with cognition and language, um, it would be good to uh, examine if that's a factor in terms of the content of the narrative. And, uh, you know. So here are my reference uh, list, studies, and um, you know, very inspiring studies. And I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you have a great time.